Okay, let's kick it off and we'll see. Um, let me first welcome the two panelists for the second conversation of the uh, Ideas Festival in Sibiu, and ultimately the first that explores the four threads that the organizers are, are, are proposing the public and the audience on and offline. First, we're going to discuss communities. Second, we're going to discuss science. Then we're going to discuss uh, democracy for zero. And last but not least, we're going to discuss the connection between technology and society, changes in both business, politics, and everything else. Uh, but this conversation, and I'm, I'm very happy to have um, two exquisite speakers to talk about it, uh, Mrs. Caroline Fenoland, who's vice president of Mihai Minescu Trust. Uh, and as we joke, half jokingly said, Caroline von, von Visky, because ultimately um, you have become uh, uh, part of the, uh, of the brand that you yourself helped build uh, on a multi-century legacy in that community. And uh, Mr. Vintila Mihailescu, professor of anthropology, himself um, a bit of uh, uh, part of the story of the Romanian brand, but not in necessarily in, in, the, in the approach that uh, ad agencies and governments and, and businesses are looking at it, but from the perspective that citizens themselves are, um, are, are feeling identity or self-image or how this is perceived by the other or the others. Um, and I said this conversation uh, segues easily from what uh, Konstantin Kiriak said about how do you build a festival or any successful cultural institution. You look at the community, you look around, and you, you, you use the, the, the landmarks, whether physical or cultural or traditions or events or date or spaces. And these come together. Now, my question to, to both of you, but we're going to start with uh, Carolina, is um, I'm tempted to ask you how difficult this is. And the way I'm going to ask that question is not what necessarily are the biggest obstacles. We can imagine that administration and many others. But really, on a personal level, um, what's the biggest difficulty to stay on such a project working on a community identity uh, a story, ultimately? The biggest um, challenge is uh, to, in, in the communities where Mihai Mineski Trust is working, and I'm working, I started in Viskri, but today we are working in 96 villages in Transylvania. And the biggest challenge is to uh, make the community to have trust in themselves, in the community, to speak. To speak, to express their needs, and to find possible opportunities or solutions to improve their standard of life. This is um, in a very big umbrella, uh, the sense of our work. And uh, I think community is for me the most used word <laughs> since 25 years. Um, but it is the real sense of community. Because I was lucky to grow up in a community with a real community spirit. If you know you had a community when you had joy, but also when you had problems. Uh, this is what we try, what I try to make uh, the community to feel that your own good is a common good. Your own benefit is the common benefit. Um, it is sometimes difficult to make these different ethnic groups in a community to feel that they have a same common sen or a common goal. Because often, I must say now, the Roma community, we think that they are not able to have the same level than others, which is wrong. If we give them the chance and if we look at them at the same, 
as we look one to each other, it is, you can arrive to create a community, a new community with a, a spirit of community. And then what I am doing, <laughs> I have more than 120 meetings with community a year, and I try to make this what I told you before. Of course, people first they complain, we have no road, we have no place where to work. But then we try to find solutions together. And this possible solution, we create projects, projects which they themselves then implement. Only like this you can create the sustainability of the project. And uh, maybe it's not now the place to say it, <laughs> but uh, like this since 15 years we have implemented 1,200 projects. Very, very small projects. Sometimes you don't think that to help a family to create a bathroom is a small project, but it is a very big project. Uh, the same if you train people to learn how to repair their roof, how to make a joint. It is very important for them because they have a skill, they open their own business, they take part of this monument. It is their pride because they contributed to the preservation mm -hmm. and they take responsibility. This is, in my view, all what community means. I'm going to come back to, to uh, at least two ideas from uh, what you've said, Karina. First, uh, how do you use uh, the idea of identity to recreate communities? Uh, and second, uh, why skills matter? And I'm, uh, and I'm, going, to, I'm going to come back to ask a few questions uh, later. But um, on that note, uh, Vintilo Mihailescu, one of the things we constantly hear deplored about the Romanian society is that it's uh, made up of broken communities. Uh, that uh, the, the, the social matrix uh, hasn't healed and that we haven't done enough efforts to create a new identity ultimately and, and that the obstacle is this rift between all the communities, whether urban or rural, between communities and amongst communities. Um, what would be the idea to, to go about mending? Uh, this broken uh, <coughs> texture? Uh, the idea or the solution? <laughs> because I have no solution. <laughs> I have some ideas. Uh, well, uh, to start with, there is not uh, such a thing as a community. There is a process, there is, as you said, making a community. In sociology, it's communitarization. Well, in English, it's hard to put it. It's coming from German. Uh, but the point here is that you have to build a community. And uh, what, uh, what you said, it's totally true. I mean, uh, as Visky was, was a community as almost all the villages, uh, rural communities and so on. So uh, it was not the fault of uh, people that this kind of communities are broken and they started to be broken for quite a while. Now you have three, four million people working abroad, coming from time to time. It's hard to have a community and a, uh, identity, a community identity in this sense, in this, uh, I mean, in this context, in this social and economical context. But uh, what is the main point is if it makes sense, people will build a community. If not, not. Uh, so it's uh, it's uh, strange, maybe, but uh, identity is something very important. It's a, uh, and uh, because you put together a lot of, of uh, 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 keywords, and just one second to, to mention them Creati creativity, industry, arts, cultural patrimony, development. So, how do you put all this together? And this is a challenge. Or what we always forget is the fact that identity is part of economics. <laughs> uh, because it's a, one of the most important social drivers. Or you don't have economy without people. Not yet, I mean. 
<laughs> we'll see. Or we split all this. So identity is something very metaphysical, cultural. Some cultural elite should work on this. We real people who are working with development uh, economics, which have nothing to do with. Or without the development of Viscri, without the meaning to go for something, what you said, let's learn, let's teach how they should do and this and this. But this made sense because they had a kind of future, because they had a kind of feeling that, well, something is happening, will be something, uh, we are, well, uh, sharing something, then these are means, nor, uh, nor ends. Because without this, it's very hard to build a community. It's very hard to say, well, you should, uh, you should have your bathroom, and uh, I will tell you how. The answer will be, why? <laughs> but you said something interesting. You said uh, it needs to make sense. Now, uh, I'm going to dig a little bit into that. Um, um, make sense to whom? And it's a question to both of you. Um, make sense to whom? To, to the members of the community, to those outside the community? Who needs to feel that this is a coherent um, process of community that would lead to an identity? First, <laughs> I think it made sense for the people in this village or in this town or in this area because what they create is for them. I don't know if you agree with me. Of course. <laughs> but and it isn't, let's say for, I, I was last week, it was a, a movie, The Village of the Socks, Viscri, mm -hmm. I said. Probably, maybe, 10 years ago, it was The Village of the Socks. Today, I think it is not anymore the village of the socks, uh, even if it is still an authentic village. But authenticity, in my way, is something what community creates. Mm -hmm. It is not static. It is changing. And it depends on the community how they want to do it. For example, we, are in, we in Viscri, from October to April, we don't accommodate tourists in our village. Very few, yeah. We decided to. Uh, have the, the Christmas events, to have time to have meetings, to decide what we have to improve in our village, what is our goal, what we want to do. And uh, this is how, how it, is an, it, it may change. It may change in future, but this is a normal community development, I think. Mm -hmm. If I may, because you said something very important, we are not so used with authenticity, you have to build it. Because uh, for um, most of us uh, coming from a kind of uh, urban elites, uh, well, where is the, the, the authenticity? We have to uh, stick to the authenticity, to the tradition and so on, and to preserve and to save uh, what and why? Uh, there is no such a thing as authenticity. What you think it is, what you feel, what makes sense for you is authenticity. Or just, just this uh, hunting of we have to preserve, uh, you are killing the future. Trying to preserve the past, which is already past, uh, you are killing the future. I don't mean, uh, uh, well, uh, skip it, uh, the past doesn't matter, not at all but in order to, to build something with. So, so l l let me ask you a layman's question. Um, you're talking about authenticity like it would be a brand. So people, in particular, uh, urban elites. Uh, and tourists. Uh, and tourists. Look at it and say, I, I want a, a pair of jeans. I want, uh, I don't know what, uh, eye glasses. And I need to be attuned to that particular fashion because it represents me. And you're saying that since what's authentic, it's also alive and it evolves, it's more like um, um, uh, the courage of actually bucking the trend, making your own fashion, choosing your own brands, regardless of what a market says. But you also said that um, community and an identity is tied into, um, into economy. So it's tied into markets, it ties into value, and value rests on two principles in, for economists, trust, 
because you exchange something and you need to trust that your return is going to be valuable. And then when you talk about it in a community sense, it needs to be based on a sort of a justice. How you define that, it's complicated, and traditional communities have their own way of, of doing this. Um, reconstructed communities have to consider that as well. So how do you go about making sure that a brand has value that brand. Don't don't get it again in a in a in a label sense of the term, but really the identity that we're talking about has both value, that is, uh, or has value that is both um, uh, a bearer of trust in that society, and um, creates a sort of a social justice. We we call our approach always the whole village concept. Uh, why we say this? Because we try in each project we are implementing, which comes from the community to resolve or to, uh, to a need, is we look at the social part in the same time, the economic and the cultural. Um, we have a partnership with an university in Germany. They are doing um, research. And the end of their research, they want to have the results that social and economic are very different and has nothing to do in a community, not, are not linked. And I told them, maybe we have uh, the wrong approach, but <laughs> Mihai Minescu trust and we think always social and economics is going hand to hand. Because if you, what's the skills, because I told you before, if people learn a skill and work, immediately the social status of them is improving. The economics, yes, and then the culture, they start to become proud of what they have. Mm -hmm. They see the opportunity to a better life through the old, what they have. <laughs> they build on what is existing, is existing, and to create a new authenticity of it. The barns, the barns in, in our villages is something special, unique in Europe. Mm -hmm. It was all over Europe in the 17th, 16th, 17th century. Now only we have them. There is a mobile construction on stones. And depending on which side of the village you live, on the sunny or on the <laughs> wet side, you have to repair it more often. It is really an technique how to do it. We learn the new community how to do it. These barns have been always used for the animals to have. We still have in Viscri an agriculture association with 68 funding members and so on. But many of these barns have another use. They become all community kitchen, they have rooms where tourists can stay. Uh, different uh, or exhibition rooms. Mm -hmm. So this is what I mean, and it is still an authentic village. The barn is still an authentic thing because we do it with the joints, exactly how it should be, but it is more put in value. Some barns are, have st still the own thing, the, the traditional use of it, others different. Now the difficult question um, and again goes to both of you, is when you do a barn traditionally, a lot of work goes in it. You can do it in five minutes, I know the name, I'm not going to give you brands, of companies that can put a, you know, um, um, a roof within one day and build a metal structure, you name it, you know what I'm talking about. How do you go about creating these lasting um, uh, elements that are not just legacy, that work with uh, what you've earlier mentioned, territory, and rhythm, which are which seem to to create almost of, of almost a, something that a composer or or, or um, uh, a light specialist would understand that it's a metric. It, it creates a sort of music, a sort of, of of poetry of that community. Can you first can you do that only at local level, or is a, a sort of a mechanism of transitioning that trust and value to higher level, and then? Uh, how do you convince people that it's worth investing ah, that? Well, finally, the, the first question. <laughs> well, it's expensive. We've just decided that it's probably more expensive than, than, than bo 
in times and effort and money than putting a, a new one. How do you go about doing that? Well, uh, I will start with the more theoretical uh, question uh, in order to come to the main empirical one. So uh, we still think and think in these terms of an opposition between tradition and modernity, yes. which is a fake story. Uh, traditional societies never had traditions. They had customs. Tradition is a modern invention, and it's not the time and the moment to uh, go farther into it. But uh, traditions are built in a way in modern societies, because modern societies need a way to master, to manage the past. And this is the best way they could found. Or in practical terms now, uh, what happened after 90 was that in most of the villages, I mean mainly countryside, but not only, but mainly countryside, former peasants, let's say, said uh, now we are free to be to get modern. Uh, we had been modernized for two centuries uh, enough. Now we'll, we will modernize, we will have this kind of self-modernization in our, in our way with our money and looking at what modern people are doing, meaning town people, western people, and so on and so forth. So, now we are coming and saying, you should stick to your old traditions. They will not get it, because it doesn't make sense. It takes some time to see, well, if I stick, and I don't stick, if I rethink these traditions, but traditions, patrimony, as a resource, not as something to, uh, well, uh, how is it? Uh, uh, the Carpathian Garden, too. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, if we take, take traditions, patrimony, and so on as a resource, and this gives me a way of life, yeah, I would prefer, I like it, but for the time being, is, this is not a way of life. It's a way of dying, and I would prefer to, to live. Well, that's it. Mm -hmm. uh, so, this is a problem and with many, many villages. I worked in Danube Delta and well, in other places. And the main problem is how to um, foresee that in two, three, four, five years, this kind of, of uh, designing, redesigning, which is not conserving Vizky, another village, this will help, this will be useful, this will be meaningful. And this takes time, because we met 25 years ago. It was at the very beginning, and it was. It took some years. A generation, as far, uh, as, far as I remember. Uh, so this is some, the key point. You have to have people understanding what you mean, or speaking their language, because otherwise uh, it's it doesn't work. I don't totally agree with you. <laughs> Fine. <Good. laughs> uh, because it is not about. Dying, it is really about life. What we have, what else we have in our villages than the heritage which we inherited. We have no other opportunities to survive. Of course, we could bring these metal things there, which what we are doing then after 20 years with them, they are rubbish. We have to pay to get rid of it. But if we have our barns, wooden barns, the traditional materials, they reintegrate in the nature from where we take it. And sometimes people are telling us, you are against modernization, you are against progress. And I think it is not true. It is totally not true because if I may give again an example of Viskri, in 90, we had uh, six houses with running water. Today we have 170 houses connected to a water purification system, to canalization system, where they have to pay nothing. The first ecologic waste water system in Romania. Um, today, um, all people, all children go to school. We have 
Roma children going to university. I often think if I would say now today, which is the name of, of Viskri, like the uh, village of socks, I would say it is the village of work today because everybody in the village has the opportunity to work with the own resources and we are alive and well alive. <laughs> yes, but you are with Viskri. Uh, look a little bit in Moldavia or Danube Delta. So well, it's a little bit different. I'm going to ask the difficult question. How dependent is Viscri about um, uh, outside financing? And how much uh, uh, the model, how much of the model do you think can be replicated in communities? And then I'm going to ask you a few questions about scaling up. Um, and then we open to questions from the audience. Um, at the beginning, in, in 2000, because, of course, this, it started 25 years ago, you are right. But uh, 15 years ago, when we opened Mihai Menescu Trust, we could uh, do many very small projects. Now we are uh, living only from application from different grants, Norwegian, all this. But I must confess you that in Viskri, we have almost no projects. People we helped in the beginning to repair their barns or their facades or their um, bridges, they are doing it themselves. We had 32,000 visitors last year in Viskri, it was 400 people. Mm -hmm. With the money we get from the entrance to our monument, to the fortified church, church, we do all the maintenance, the restoration of, of this uh, citadel. But what is the key, I think, of our, may I say, little success is that we find for each person the place. We have 17 families who have guest houses. We have 68 funding members, members to an agriculture association. We still have the animals. We have common land. We use it like in 1600. But we build now a, a little factory to uh, pr milk processing factory. We have 46 horses. All the Roma people who have horses, they do transport. Through, uh, we have nine, nine um, um, around the village uh, um, uh, different uh, way, um, ways where to go. So they are making uh, Trials? No, no. Where, where are they like um, uh, horse racing? Yes. No, yes. No, they, they go by horse and cart to see, mm -hmm. to see what is in the surrounding. So, vegetable gardens. Eighty ladies who are making socks and uh, uh, other things. The socks are still part of the matrix. <laughs> they are, and um, Viskri is only a reference. It's not the model. In every village where we are working, it is different. Um, but of course, the mistakes we have done in Viskri, we will not do them in other villages. But it depends on the community. Sometimes in a village, the people in the community said, we don't want foreigners in our house. They want, then we work more in agriculture because this is what they want. And um, I told you before that Viskri, uh, was accepted uh, on the list uh, of uh, villages or towns next to Venice, Marseille, and Pilsen as the application of the Faro Convention. The, all Faro principles have been implemented in Viscri. Now I try to spread this on other villages because it is a recognition. Say a few things because I don't think everybody knows uh, about the basic of the uh, logic of the convention and why those principles are important. Um, the Faro Convention uh, shows that the heritage, the natural and built heritage, is used for the improvement of quality of life. And this is what happened in Viskri, and is happening in the villages where Mihai Minescu Trust is working. Uh, Vintila, you've worked a lot in, in, in the Danube Delta as well. Um, where you have a similar mix, you have a very strong, and we're not going to call it tradition, but heritage, um, um, both 
uh, in the form of natural, but also human patrimony. And it's also under a very strong process of, uh, um, of loss of heritage based on, on, on demography. These communities are, are, are dying, are dying out sometimes in numbers. Um, or they're, they're becoming um, uh, industrialized in a post-communist fashion that kind of cuts all connections with what was heritage, just not to call it um, in an artificial sense tradition. Um, can you reinvent, can you resurrect uh, a community? Um, and to what degree new people coming in, as was the case in Viskri, but as I know is the case in, in some of the communities you work with in, in, in the Danube Delta, can be part of a re-established uh, heritage uh, or organic heritage in those places? Of course they can, but actually they did not. Uh, well, here there is another problem too. Uh, the fact this split between natural heritage and cultural heritage. And uh, what we sometimes uh, understand by, by heritage and uh, fighting for hate, heritage is uh, just save, uh, I don't know what, uh, this kind of fish or this kind of flower or this kind of whatever. Or this cannot be done. You can save or not the whole ecosystem. And man is part of the ecosystem. Because the way uh, the Danube Delta was treated, well, first of all, it was uh, so who had the power could buy for several years. There was no fish. Everything was private property. And this was, was very hard for fishermen. Or uh, people in the Danube Delta, they live from fish. And they used to do this for several, many, many centuries. And without being uh, trained ecologists, they knew how to cope with this. Uh, or uh, when all this was broken, first uh, by privatization, uh, then by all kind of uh, tricky, yeah, well, let's not go into details, but uh, also by this shift to an industrial fishing, and last but not least, the fact that Danube Delta is a, a natural patrimony, so men should not touch it. Men meaning tourists may be, because they pay, but not local people. Uh, so this split between, uh, because, yeah, yes, they have wonderful traditions. They can exhibit, they will, will make festivals. Yeah, but between two festivals, these people have to eat, which is hard. Uh, or this split between, between a natural patrimony uh, with man being the worst enemy of natural uh, patrimony, sometimes he is, of course, but uh, then you really have to bring together these two parts. Well, this is just starting now to try to bring together. And this is possible because uh, for people born in the Danube Delta, it's very hard to go to, to towns. So it's harder than from other kind of, of uh, villages and countryside. So they would like, and they like staying here. So if they have the opportunity, they are doing it. Now the problem is with uh, tourism, who is behind tourism? How to do this tourism? You have no uh, reglementation, not what you have to do, but what you should not do. Uh, meaning not this, uh, uh, well, uh, 10 floor, uh, I don't know what kind of huge villas and so on. You should not do it. Yes, but I have the money. So it's just starting and people on both sides are starting to understand. And first of all, uh, uh, the main actor is a tourist mm -hmm. well, who is a go-between. Well, not all kind of tourists. But there is a category of tourists who say, well, I'm coming here and I'm paying more for authenticity. I mean, I want to see a house as if the New Delta, because it cannot be a house from 100 years ago. As in Vikriski, they are not restored like precisely 100 years ago. Uh, we want to eat in a proper way, you know, authentic way, and so on and so forth. And I pay double. But you have to, to do this. 
so people now understand that uh, they should not uh, go to modernity too fast because uh, this kind of redesigning tradition, authenticity, local, mm -hmm. is important for them, but it's also important for their for their lives. It's not just for aesthetics; it's also for for living. And it's starting, but it takes time. Well, we're, we're taking every single year um, the uh, participants in the Aspen Young Leaders Program for a week for the Aspen Seminar in the Mountains and for another week in the Danube Delta. And one of the thing over the 10 years that we've done this, uh, we discovered, is that the representatives of the local community started caring more about what happens to the garbage, what happens to the surroundings, what the neighbor is building. So there's a sense of uh, whether it comes from tourists or education, and I've realized that younger members of the community, uh, and, and my cliche and my expectation was that they are uh, the culprits, they're more of a part of the problem than the solution. And in fact, I was shocked that they got very modern, they educate me every single time, not just about ecology of the Danube Delta, but about fundamental principles when it comes to um, uh, community based on uh, a relationship between the natural patrimony and, and, and human culture, including human economy. And finally, before we open up uh, for questions uh, from the audience, is there a lesson, a lesson from businesses, for businesses, sorry, into how you build uh, resilient communities in this respect and rebuild um, a, a sense of heritage based on a, on a new model of economic success, ultimately, for those communities? I think... Um local economy <laughs> spirit. We don't, for example, we don't buy cream from Metro. We buy only from our Roma lady who is doing the cream. Mm -hmm. um, it is, at the beginning it was difficult when after we trained the people to be carpenter or plaster, they have been not happy because I told them we cannot employ you at Mihai Minescu Trust. Mm -hmm. Because I was an accountant at the collective farm before. I'm an economist, as I told you before. And I knew how this mentality for work was. Dependence. This dependence, yes. And so um, I told them, if you want to work, you have to do this. Because we, th these businesses, we created for them. We helped them to have this self-employment a self-employed uh, uh, business. And at the beginning, of course, they had pro uh, contracts with us. Mm -hmm. But then when the people in the village see that how uh, good labor they are doing, good craftsmen, they are on their own way. Mm -hmm. So they don't work anymore with Mihai Minescu Trust, which is very good. So this is the, the business, and it is true. Tr everybody in the village who need to do to repair a roof or to do a facade or to do a barn is working with the local pe people. When we pay 50 bunny more for, for uh, potatoes or for uh, tomatoes from the village mm -hmm. uh, uh, gardens than from the local market. This is how we are helping each other, how I this business. We had a big discussion last winter if we should allow new people coming in the village and open guest houses. And I said, yes, but if we would have done this five years ago, many of our new Bucharest families would not be here. So we think that we should make a reglementation Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, to be open. Now, this last family from Bucharest, they are open a restaurant, not a guest house, because we have many guest houses. Another one is uh, doing uh, products for diabetic uh, people. So, um, and only to, to talk about newcomers, you, you said before, we have every last Sunday uh, in a month a meeting, the community forum. And of course, the newcomers from a town, they can speak much easier. Maybe they are communication officers somewhere. <laughs> and they, sometimes the local village people, they are a little bit shy because they cannot talk like them. 
This is why I suggested, and it is working, that every meeting is prepared by an old local person and a new local person <laughs> to bring this together and then they learn one from each other. And it is the, this, what I started to say, the same level of respect. Thank you. I think that's a good idea for, for business ecosystems as well. Uh, questions? Go ahead. There's a microphone there. Hello, my name is Monica. I'm an actress from Bucharest, and I'm very happy to hear uh, all of these stories. I'm uh, curious about one aspect. Uh, you seem to be very happy uh, in your c community that you have rebuilt, and I'm wondering how much you feel uh, is due to the fact that you come from this community. Uh, this is one thing. And from this, I would like to ask both of you if you have any advice for people who want to help rebuild communities without being from there, like coming from outside the community. Does it make sense? Yes. Uh, OK. It is true. It is more easy for us to work in a community from where we are. Of course, I think because I was uh, a teacher after the revolution, and the teacher and the priest has respect in the village and trust. So this was uh, one of the main benefits that I'm coming and all my ancestors lived in, in this village and my father was very close always to the community. But we are working, as I told you, in many other communities where we try to find the right village leader. I always thought that by intuition, after the second or third meeting with the community, I know which is the real village leader. We call him the real one, yes. But what means a real village leader? What does this mean? So we, Mihai Menescu Trust Team, and with the specialists, we thought, what is the community expecting from their leader? What are the authorities expecting? They must accept them. What we, Mihai Minescu Trust, are expecting from a leader because he must be this missing in the chain from us to them. And we had training first with our team to find out the profiles of village leaders and then to train and see what qualities they have, what quality they are missing. And I must tell you then, during one week, these missing qualities of many, they have been so much improved and it was wonderful to see. And we are working with this village leader continuously and do uh, training. And uh, regarding your second question, last year uh, we started and now the book is almost ready. Uh, a girl from Argentina is writing a book of the human approach of Mihai Menescu Trust. Why I choose a, a girl from Argentina? Because I thought she should not have prejudgments on mm -hmm. Saxons, Romanians, Roma. And she is analyzing all the mistakes we have done which people who want to create, recreate or work in a community, they will have these problems and to see how sometimes we could resolve them, sometimes not. So we have good examples and bad examples which did not work. We have communities where it did not work well. But I think this book, which will come out end of this December, um, will help people who are, want to, to work in a community. Can I put a twist on that question, Vintila Mihilescu? And I know you know that I'm obsessed about it. Um, one of the, uh, the, 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 the narrative that comes back over and over again is the obsession of uh, authorities, political parties, communities of having uh, some of the three million Romanians that moved abroad returning. And what we hear here is that First, you can rebuild communities without having necessarily locals and exclusively locals participate in that. Second, that you can build a sense of community sometimes without necessarily being physically there uh, and tapping into sometimes with complete outsiders. Um, 
is there uh, some kind of a, of, of a, I don't want to call it a lesson or a model, but really an idea there where, where, where us as a society can use to, 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 to reconnect with essentially three million Romanians uh, of all ethnicities, all religions that are living in Europe? Uh, well, I'm not so sure because, uh, as you said, it's not a model, it's a reference. Or in any each uh, other village, or uh, this is a co quite a coherent region. So villages are, of course, different, but nevertheless, this part, this uh, region, has its uh, history, its culture, uh, kind of coherence. If you are moving uh, south or north to Moldavia, if you are moving Banat, you are moving south uh, Bergan and so on, you will find totally different problems. Mm -hmm. And uh, as far as I know from Visky, there were not a thousand migrants. Mm -hmm. uh, or you have most of the villages where you already have a lot, like 20, 40, 60 percent people who are migrating for 10 years already. So uh, if the problem is to bring these people back, this is so, something totally different. Forget it. But uh, what is important, and, uh, and in this case, this can be, sorry, it is a model, it is a strategy. Uh, in very academic terms, it's integrated uh, management, no? You call it like this. <laughs> uh, only done, uh, really done, grassroots and efficient. Uh, so uh, this kind of, of approach, this kind of, of community building can be very useful in order to keep other people to go, to live. Because look here, uh, you can, in some conditions, following such kind of approach, but with the, uh, the local touch, because this has to be a local touch. Uh, you can survive and even uh, develop in your village, in your zone, in your, uh, your region. Or this is, to my, so from my point of view, it's even more important not to, uh, to push more and more people uh, out there then trying now to come back will give you I don't know what. Uh, but if it's still going the same way, we'll have something like 17 million people uh, in 10 years. And this is demography. This is not uh, fantasy. It's not politics. It's real stuff. I mean, uh, that's it. So this kind of approach, this kind of strategy uh, can be and should be used in order to help people not to find, not to, to look for other solutions uh, in some other places. We had also eight families who left in 2007 to work abroad, and seven of them, they came back. And because they had where to come back. This is Madalina and somebody else that I can't see there. Let's take two or three questions and then... Uh, uh, my question would be related to this idea of intervention, in, especially in rural communities, and I'm interested in uh, whether there is a strategy from your perspective, from Mihai Minescu Trust's perspective, on uh, working in a community that, for example, was featured in Mandriesh Beton. I don't know if you know the, the project, which is one of the most successful in, in Romania in terms of showcasing what happened to those people that went abroad and find some sort of success and then came and invested in a house that is uh, actually their pride. Thank you. And another question there? Uh, yes, hello. Um, I'm oh, mostly buddy. interested how you keep, um, or if you have a strategy in order to keep the youth coming back to the village. Also, this question comes uh, in the context that uh, when uh, there is a number of statistics from the UN saying that most of us will live in uh, rural, uh, urban areas in the future. So how do you keep youth coming back to uh, the villages? How you involve them there? Thank you. First question or the second? Um, whatever you want. <laughs> I like even the second more <laughs> because it is about youth. About, uh, and I must confess that the first years, I always thought that we have to invest in the adults, that they have enough resources to send their 
children to school. <laughs> Today, it is unique in our region, Brasov, that we have now more children than ever. We have more teachers than ever in our village. So, um, and when the first uh, two children, I told you, went to university and the parents came with this boy and asked me, what should I study? Tourism or law? And I looked at him and I said, I think if you would study tourism, you could come back in the village and work here. And, and his mother said, no, no, he should not come back if he's studying. <laughs> so, of course, he's studying law, <laughs> not tourism. But it was so nice for me that they came to ask me. Um, it is true that many of our children, my daughter, our daughter, she lived for five years in Germany. She, she worked at the German parliament. She came back. She came back, back to Bucharest. Now she's working from Viscri, so internet. The world is now very small. But of course, the majority of, of uh, children, of youth, they, after universities, they are living in, in towns. Uh, but the, the, the youth who are only finishing uh, high school, uh, like it is often with the Roma population. They are working in these new guest houses. And we have a lot, we have from zero to 14 years, we have 160 children, I can say, in, from 420. So we have a lot of children, but the, when they grow, as I told you, they leave. You are asked me about a strategy in 2000. 11, when we create, made a strategy with uh, the team of Mihai Minescu Trust, before we had no strategy. We only want to try people in the villages to, ha to a better life, to use in a sustainable way their resources, their heritage. This was the strategy. But then in 2011, when we made a real strategy, a very simple one, um, and my colleagues, when everybody had to propose projects, they all proposed projects for youth, because they are young. And when I am coming very happy from a community meeting, they are coming from schools. We have planted 1,700,000 trees with 96 schools. We are doing a lot of um, programs or, or projects, they have to find out about their heritage. They do inventory of traditional furniture, for example. They are doing then a painting class about this furniture. Uh, we are doing recycling classes with them. Uh, we are doing crafting. We are revitalizing uh, the, the, the school orchards and make an inventory of the apple trees and all these things. We, all this is happening with youth. Of course, we cannot stop them to stay in the villages. And I don't know if this is uh, to your question, the answer or not quite. I don't remember exactly what was the question with the strategy. This is, in a way, the answer. Also. Uh, Vintira Mihalescu, can you see a way in which this can become almost of a circular type model? where Romanians um, um, can adapt to the changes in our societies between rural and urban, to have a life cycle that takes us from one community to another with the possibility of coming back and so on. So creating a new type of, of uh, almost uh, nomadic, but in a sense of age periods, education and so on, but to make it part of, a, of, of almost a, a functional model. Uh, to some extent we have to and to some extent we already started, I mean, uh, thinking 27 years before this kind of mobility, as your daughter for instance, she's in Viscri, but after five years there and maybe other two there and it's part of normal life. Um, <clears throat> but uh, I wanted to also, and I'm coming back via this answer, uh, speaking about uh, uh, young people in, in villages or how to keep them in villages. Viscri and what you uh, refer to uh, with Mundi and Shibeton, so um, 
Yeah, yeah, no, no. Certeze uh, are extraordinary cases. Uh, so you can, and, or to some extent, to the extreme. So what you have with uh, Certese in Visqui's case, it's just the opposite. Now you have to choose what to, what is a success story. I prefer the Visqui, but well, that's it. That's not a problem. But they are really extreme. Uh, but what I can say, not just from one village or another, an ordinary or extraordinary village, is the fact that. For the first time in the modern history of Romania, after 96, uh, the migration flux in inversed. And we are the only country in Europe having the reverse uh, migration trend. Uh, I mean, demographics, high statistics, no, demographic. So, uh, and this is a problem uh, which uh, pushes up um, uh, even stronger pressure on rural rural uh, space because you have no resources, not so much of resources in uh, in the rural space, and you have more and more young people, and not all the villages are happy villages uh, with a happy manager like uh, like Viscri. So this is a, a very important uh, a very important problem. The, uh, the fact that they are migrating is uh, not uh, part of this mobility, mm -hmm. uh, well, wishful thinking and, uh, as a profession, as a kind of uh, lifestyle. It's a last no. resort, yeah, uh, it's, uh, no other way. Yeah. No other way. Uh, so from this point of view, uh, I think that we have really a, a huge problem precisely with young people who have no or few opportunities for work, and this is a happy case, and there are others, and others can be built, but meaning 10, 20, 100, 200, 300 villages, not uh, 800, uh, 8,000. So for the time being, it's not a, a macro, uh, macro solution. And only to I hope you disagree. <laughs> uh, to answer to your question why Viscri is not happening like Mundri and Peton is because the majority of the people in, in my village and in the villages where we are working, they understand that it's their only opportunity that their economics is improving. In the other case, they think this is the economic improvement. But we understand that these are our resources and our economic uh, growth is depending on this. This is why we don't have the case like that they are destroying and doing other. Uh, uh, yes, Certese. OK, with that, I'm being told that our time is up. So uh, let me. Uh, join everybody in thanking you uh, for, for a great conversation. And uh, for you guys, those that haven't visited either the Danube Delta or not just the village of Viscri, because there's a whole ecosystem of villages there, at least four. And, and, uh, and I've been told by Madalina, not just southern Transylvania, but all Transylvania, do talk to, to Caroline and, uh, and Vintila because they do have the best of tips. Uh, with that, uh, Caroline Fenoland, um, Vintila Mihalescu, thank you so much. Thank you.